In a previous video, I showed you how to take an old 8-bit Creality board and reprogram it to flash the LED, control some switches. It's perfect for electronic projects. But a lot of people ask, can you control a stepper? I'll show you how to do that in today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. It's also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Once again, I'm going to use one of these Creality boards that you've probably got sitting around collecting dust. I'm going to use an 8-bit version, version 1.1.5, which has a bootloader installed. In that first video, I showed you how to flash the LED on the board, flash it on and off, and some people thought that was too simple, kind of dumb. So others wanted to know how to drive the stepper motor. Well, it turns out it's the same technique. There's two signals you need to drive the stepper driver on this board. One is a high or low signal, which tells it counterclockwise or clockwise. And then you need a second signal, which is a pulse train, just like flashing the LED, which tells it to step the motor. You just have to do it a lot faster than flashing an LED, and then you can drive the stepper. There's a third signal, which will enable or disable the stepper, but that's just an on or off signal as well. So everything I showed in that first video, we can now use to control the stepper driver and drive a stepper motor. If we go back to the schematic I found from our Rydal, I'll put a link to this in the description below. We can see there's a schematic for the stepper drivers on page two. The stepper drivers are actually hidden underneath a heat sink. The heat sink is there to help keep these things cool. There's a little potentiometer next to each driver, shown here as RP4. You can adjust the current with that. For this project, we're gonna use the extruder driver. The schematic shows it as E-MOT, or extruder motor. The three pins I talked about are pin two, which is the enable pin. 16, which is the step pin that gets the pulse train, and 19 is the direction pin, which says either it's counterclockwise or clockwise. If we look at the schematic of the microcontroller, you can see that E-step is on PB1 and E-direction is on PB0. If we look at the header file that I'll link to in the description below, you can see PB0 is digital pin 0 on Arduino, and PB1 is digital pin 1 on Arduino. Now the enable pin that can turn the driver on or off is on PD6 and it controls the X, Y, and E drivers. We go back to the header file and we see that PD6 is actually connected to Arduino digital pin 14. Now we can make the code. So here we define those pin connections to the E step, E direction, and enable pin. Then we make all of them outputs. Then we write to the enable pin to make it low so that enables the motor so it can spin. Then we write to the direction pin and make it high. This makes it run clockwise. The final step is to make the pulse train, just like we did with flashing an LED. We make it high, then we make it low, and we delay in between the two. But this time we're delaying microseconds instead of milliseconds, so 250 microseconds between the high and the low. So I have a stepper motor with a chup cube on top and a stepper cable that I got from a printer that I tore apart. I connected a power supply running at about 12 volts so I can drive this motor with enough current. And here's the stepper motor being controlled by the board running that code. It's just spinning the chep cube. The next step is I want to control an extruder motor and I've got electrical wire going through this. So I want to see if I can control how much electrical wire comes out so maybe eventually I make something that can cut it off and make my own jumper wires. I just moved the cable over to this new extruder motor. And here's a top view showing the wire going through it. It's also going through a filament runout sensor, but I don't have that wired up to anything. I wired up a toggle switch to a connector so I can plug it in for the enable switch. Then I use the push button switch that I wired up in a previous video, and I'm going to use this to control the direction. The direction is wired to the X stop connector, and the enable switch is wired to the Y stop connector. If you look at the schematic, the Y stop is on PC3, X stop is on PC2. We go back to the header file, and PC2 is digital pin 18, so this is the direction pin. And then PC3 is D19, and this is the enable pin. Now I'll make a copy of that stepper motor sketch. It's still got the same connections for the stepper driver, but I'll add the direction switch, pin 18, and the on off or enable switch, pin 19. I'll also make two variables for the state of those switches. Now I gotta set all the pins to output for the stepper driver and input for the switches. So once that's done, now we can write some code to watch the on off switch or enable switch. So we'll read it and if it's low, then the stepper is enabled. 
but if it's high or open, then the stepper is off. Now we'll also read the state of the push button switch. And if that push button switch is pressed, it'll be low. And that means we'll send a high to make it run clockwise. Otherwise, it's just gonna run counterclockwise. And then finally, we just drive the stepper just like before. We drive it high, then low. Only this time I'm doing a 450 microsecond delay, so it's gonna run a little bit slower. So now I've loaded the sketch, we can try it out. I flip the switch to turn the motor on and it's extracting wire, but then I press the switch and now it's retracting. And when I let go of the switch, it's gonna start extracting again until I press the switch and it's gonna retract. And it's gonna keep doing this until I shut it off with the on-off switch. So that's how you can program the Creality board to drive the stepper driver to drive a stepper motor. Now, this did get a little bit warm because the current is set pretty high on the extruder driver. There's a screw next to the driver on the board that you can adjust and lower the current drive. And I was driving it pretty fast for an extruder motor, so that's why this got kind of warm. This one didn't at all, and I slowed it down when I did that. But that's it. That's really all you need to do to drive a stepper motor. Now, there are libraries out there for Arduino to drive stepper motors, but once you understand these basics, you'll better understand those libraries that you can use and any future projects. Some people have asked me about the Creality boards like a version 4.22. Those are 32-bit. It's not the same. I'm talking about the older 8-bit versions like the version 1.1.5, which you can still buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link to one in the description below. But I'm focusing on the 8-bit stuff because these boards are the ones most people have pulled out of their printers and replaced it with the 32-bit ones. Now, if you want to design your own circuit boards, I highly recommend PCBWay.com. You can get 10 pieces for $5. Now, a lot of people ask me how much is that with shipping. Well, shipping to me is going to be $5 plus right around $20 additional shipping for a total of just under $25. For 10 boards, that's still pretty cheap. And if you want assembly service, they can do that as well. They can do a turnkey where they supply the parts, you can supply the parts, or you can do a combo. They also can do single pieces or panelized. You can do top side, bottom side soldering. They got a lot of different options and they do a great job. So if you're looking for circuit boards or circuit board assembly, check out PCBWay.com. So once again, if you like this series, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you'd like to see next. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or buy a membership through Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.